That game there against City was absolutely brutal. Uh, it's the only way to describe it. It really is. But today, it's Monday. We're moving on. We're moving forwards. How do you move forwards? You try and learn from the mistakes that you've made. And what Eric Ten Hag will be doing with these players today at Carrington is making them criticise each other. Making them speak about the problems that we saw on the pitch and tactically taking a look at where issues lay. Because it wasn't just about self-belief and confidence. Well, that was a big part of it. What I'm going to do in this video is run through what I think Eric Ten Hag will be talking about with these players. The problems that we saw in terms of the confidence, the attitude and the midfield and the defence. Plenty of issues to discuss. Let's run through them in this video. Try and have a sort of um, conversation so that we can take it. But it's not just about criticising, pointing fingers without the purpose of helping. Making mistakes is never the issue. Not learning from them, that's a bigger issue. But I think Eric Ten Hag will do that in the same way that he learned from Brentford and Brighton, and Brighton games. Sorry. Let's run through it all. A bit of another therapy session. I'm bored of doing these, I swear to God. This is what Eric Ten Hag said after the game yesterday. He said, look, it's an open door. This performance is unacceptable as a team. And as, a, as individuals, we will criticise each other tomorrow. And then we will learn the lessons and we have to do better starting with the next game. Now, he went into a little bit more detail after it. He said this as well. He said, look, it's quite simple. It's a lack of belief. When you don't believe on the pitch that you can't win games, then it is unacceptable. We get undisciplined at following the rules and you get hammered. And that's happened today. At half time, we changed the attitude and we, and we saw a different United come out. We created more. We were on the ball more. We were brave. And uh, look, City took their foot off the gas in the second half. And that really helped Manchester United. But what I want to do now is take a tactical look at some major glaring errors that I think we saw yesterday. And going back to what Ten Hag said there to begin with, before we even look at a goal being conceded, although it wasn't a build up to the first goal, we talk about confidence. We talk about a lack of it and a lack of self-belief. This was... 10 seconds before they scored their first goal. Jaden Sancho on the ball here. Look at that. Look at the space we've got. We've got Bruno there. Is that Bruno? I think it's Bruno. We've got Anthony over there. Jaden Sancho on the ball here. Look how simple that pass is. Instead, passes it straight to the opposition. City, go and counter. And this is where we look at another bit of an issue. Actually, Paul Scholes spoke, spoke about this this morning on Instagram. So, do you, do you remember when we used to have wingers who trap back and help their defenders? After Diogo Delo got that yellow card, that Matomano's over there covering the space. After Diogo, Diogo Delo got the yellow card, he was kind of trying to follow Jack Grealish, follow his man. Anthony is over here at this point in time. And I think this was... A, well, let me get rid of that. That's the wrong thing. There we go. Anthony in position over here, right? He needed to be over there. Overload. Look at that overload that City have got. And it makes it... <laughs> and they drew a dick there. That was an accident. <laughs> um, but this overload there, City just took advantage of it. Allowing a man to stay wide. He gets on the ball with Bernardo Silva, fires it into Phil Foden, 1-0. But it starts from United not having the confidence and the self-belief to go forward with the ball. United then not tracking... Well, more specifically... Anthony not tracking his man. Anthony just operating in the wrong position at the wrong time. He needs to be operating over there. And that was a big fundamental issue that we saw in the first goal. But the wider and probably I would say bigger issue that we saw in that game revolved around midfield. And there's two examples of it in two separate goals. In this example here, Manchester United are aggressively pushing forward. You've got Bruno there. You've got McTominay, who's followed his man out wide. You've obviously got Anthony in position there. You've got Sancho up there. No, not Anthony. That's Rashford. That's Sancho. And Bruno gets the ball past him. Let me just get rid of those lines there. Bruno gets the ball. Just shifted past him there. And look how much space Jack Grealish has to run into. Look at that. Absolute asm in midfield. Where there's nobody. Because Christian Eriksen has decided to hold his position. He's tried to stay down here to sort of mark Phil, to mark um, Kevin De Bruyne. Tara and I mean, defensively, we're in, they're in the right positions. Madassi is going to have to hold out wide here because he knows he can't leave Phil Foden completely unoccupied. 
But because Ericsson's holding deeper, you've got Bruno pressing, McTominay pressing, Ericsson's not pressed. Because of that, you create a load of space that Jack Grealish can do. He can do what he wants to do. Just, just jogging forward into space when Ericsson finally does close down the space. Well, then Kevin De Bruyne is free. And that was always going to be an issue with City. You try and stop Haaland, you leave everyone else unoccupied. But it's, it's that lack of communicate lack of everybody doing the same thing when pressing works you got to do it correctly and together Ericsson doesn't press and United didn't have that defensive midfielder yesterday and I think that was an error that Eric Ten Hag made I mean you can I think we all knew it going into the game look it's not just about picking teams just because they're winning City are incredible and they rotate every single week because they've got a strong strong squad Eric Ten Hag would have learned from yesterday that he can't simply trust these players out. He learned from the Brighton and Brentford game that he couldn't trust these players. Drop three of them. Maguire, Luke Shaw and Ronaldo got four wins out of it. He's now learned that you can't just trust these players simply because they're winning. It's more to it than that. And he's going to have to operate in, with different mentalities going into different games. And going into this City game, we tried, I believe... To go a little bit too toe to toe with City. And obviously, that first goal there, as I said, came from that massive amount of space being created that Grealish could, uh, could exploit. He exploited it. United got dragged apart. Haaland was in space. And that ball from him was, quite frankly, ridiculous. Unstoppable. I actually don't particularly think that defensively we're doing too much wrong here. But we've got our line there. But just that ball from De Bruyne into that space there. You just need a good touch on it. And you've got Haaland, who's clearly going to be the best I think we might have ever seen in the Premier League. Early to say it, but the, the signs are, are he's utter filth in front of goal. Filth. And look, let's go on to the next goal. Again, a little bit of, what do you call this? Overconfidence? I don't know. Look, United have got the ball here with Anthony over there. And we turn this into a goal for City. Because Anthony fires the ball in. I don't know who that is. It doesn't really matter. Fires it in against the City player. It bounces off him. And look where it bounces into. In this position. Let's analyse where we are. You've got Ericsson who's behind. Look, Kevin De Bruyne. Furthest man forward there for City. I keep doing the wrong thing. Furthest forward man. He's not the furthest forward. But at this particular moment in time. De Bruyne's got the ball here. Ericsson's behind him. But Tomane's up there. You've got Malasia tracking his, ma his man down there. You've got Delo over there. And look at everything that's broken. And just, again, the sheer amount of space that De Bruyne has to run into there. Because we don't have that player in Casemiro who's sitting there protecting and screening the defence. And then what happens? Well, you know exactly what happens. It goes from that. De Bruyne... To a counter-attack where he runs through United are trying desperately to come back. That they're coming from a negative position. And then, oh, what does Kevin De Bruyne do? He finds Haaland on the wing. What does Haaland do? Not just scoring. Him and Foden had United on toast. 4-0 before half-time and the game was dead and buried. But the major issues for me were well, I think Eric Ten Hag was correct in saying that United did not have that self-belief. We didn't. And it came across. And as I said, to go back to it, it was just on show straight away. This turned into the opening goal for City. That wasn't a difficult pass or a touch for Sancho. Just to do there, clean it through. And then United were gone. If we had them all, look, look at that. City are going for it. And we annoyed. Annoying. That's what I would call that. But Eric Ten Hag, I think, learned some lessons from this game. Learned some lessons that he will take into the next game. And the next game against City. There's certain lessons that will be learned. For City and City only. They're on a different level altogether. But I think what we're now going to see is Casemiro being introduced into this team. It's not just a case of keeping the team the same because they are winning. It's obviously not good enough. And the, the lack of momentum that came between having a month between these Arsenal and City games didn't really help us. It didn't. But it's not an excuse. Hence why I've only mentioned it now. Nearly 10 minutes into the video. But if, if, if Eric Ten Hag learned against Brighton and Brentford that he couldn't trust these players. If he learned against Real Sociedad that he couldn't trust his squad, then I think what Ten Hag has learned here in this game against City is, well, 
We already knew that City were on a different level. But keeping players in the team on form and form alone isn't good enough in the same way that keeping players in a team on name and name alone isn't good enough. It has to be a blend. And I think he's learned that now as a manager. It was a painful lesson. It was a lesson I really wish he didn't have to learn on the scale like we saw yesterday. But it's a lesson that I think Ten Hag will learn. We'll have learned and we'll be speaking to the players about today at Carrington. As I said, as he said, in fact, as a team and as individuals, we will criticise each other tomorrow. That's what I've done in this video. I've, I've criticised the individuals. I've criticised the team. The lack of tracking back from our, full, our wingers exposed the fullbacks. And that early yellow card for Delo took any confidence away from him to be tight to his man to Grealish and the Grealish have fun. Our midfielders, non-existent. And I think Ten Hag makes some tactical errors. We needed more in midfield. We did need more in midfield. And we learned that lesson the most painful way possible. But I didn't do this video to just sort of like, just slam players and throw them under the bus and X, Y, Z. Like some people might be done. I'm not overreacting, but there has to be criticisms that come from this game, both for the players and for Ten Hag. Take it forward, guys. Don't do that shit again, please. Said that last year. Let me know what your reaction and your overarching feeling is after that game against City. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Hopefully, this is the last therapy room we have this year. But I don't know. I can't, I can't rule it out.